Hi everyone, it's Laura. Thank you so much for watching. Today's video is the second video in my winter coat series. I have posted last week part one. If you missed that, link is listed down below in the description box. In today's video, I will show you how I have sewn all the velvet parts of the coat and also the lining. I will make the inside pockets that are on the side of my coat, the loops for the belt and some further details. So if you want to know how I have done that, then please keep watching. And also make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss any further parts. And now let's get into it. Here I have laid out the back parts. There is nothing spectacular about that. I think I'm just gonna skip those steps. What I have to do here is to pin first all the bottom parts together, sew them together and once they are creating one piece I will sew on the upper piece and that's it. So I think this is pretty self-explanatory. So that would be the velvet part. And here I have the already finished lining for the back part. There is only one detail that I would like to show you closer. Other than that it has been the same procedure. I just I have sewn those pieces together and then I have sewn the upper part on it and that was about it. But let's have a closer look on the detail that is on the top. I have thought it would be beautiful if I could have my signature crest inside of the coat. Um, so I took a piece of velvet, I made the edging with a bias tape, I have sewn my signature crest on it and then I have sewn the entire piece here on the back lining. And this piece here, this is a black cord, I have sewn it also in place. And when I will put this together with the collar, I will make sure that this doesn't get tangled in because this will be my cord for hanging the coat later. So if you don't have a signature crest, of course you don't have to do this. But I still thought that would be a really lovely detail. The sleeves are the next less spectacular part. Here I just have to sew them on all sides together and that's it. Because I'm going to have fluffy cuffs, so that means I don't have to do anything special at the bottom. This is how the sleeves look like once they have been sewn together. So on the left side is the velvet sleeve that's going to be on the top and obviously the other one is made of the lining. I have finished the lining. I have sewn all the pieces together including the sleeves. What I definitely recommend is to put the thing on with the bad side facing upwards um, with a good side to your body and then you can figure out if this would be too wide. I mean so far it looks like it's huge but once there's going to be also the velvet um, layer on it it's gonna feel totally different. This is still a winter coat and you need to be able to put something underneath it like a thick sweater or whatever. So I always like putting it on and when I figure out that this is a little bit too wide then I um, pin all the seams together a little bit further then I put it on again and when I see that this is the better solution then I just sew through again and cut back the excess fabric. This is what I had to do because I was a little bit too generous with the seam allowance and this thing was really huge. But now it's um, as I want it to be and we can go on with the next step. So this might look a little bit weird, but this is the next step that is totally necessary. I put on the lining, um, I put it on the way it's going to be, the good side facing towards my body, and then I put over the two main parts of the coat that has been sewn together already at the shoulder area, and I have only pinned them together on the sides, because what I need to figure out now is where the pockets are supposed to be, and also the coat will have a belt, and I need to figure out where uh, should I position the loops. So what I have done is I put it on, kind of adjusted it so how it feels comfortable and then I found out the perfect position for my belt. So I just marked here above the belt and underneath it the position for the loops. And I think the perfect position for the pockets would be around here. So I made a mark here also with a crayon and this is where the um, upper edge of my pocket is supposed to be. So now I can take it off and we will continue there. Okay, so now I put the velvet parts on the ground again. And here on one side I have the marks for the loops and for the pocket. So 
I'm gonna fold the coat here like that so that I have here the side seam and I'm going to straighten the side seam on the other side and now I'm going to put this one on the top of the other one so and I can copy the marks and that way the loops and the pocket um, pockets are going to be on the exact same place on both sides so they're going to be equally high this is very important otherwise it would look really bad so I just make sure that I copy that right yeah I think that looks good and now I can add here a cord the similar cord um, the same cord that I put on the lining on the top uh, for hanging the coat um, in this position and here I can pin the pocket parts but um, for that I will have to take this apart this is how I will saw the pocket parts on and the loop. So we have here the loop, I measured it so that um, it would be a little bit loose over the belt. Um, I have to account for the seam allowance, so let's say here is going to be the seam and this is what's going to be left of the loop on the top. So I still need to be able to pull the belt through it easily there needs to be enough space on the sides because otherwise it would be difficult. Now I'm happy with the results, so I pinned it in place. Here I have the lining part for the pocket. Uh, you can see also the direction how I have pinned it. And this is the front part. This is the back part of the coat and here I have pinned on the velvet po uh, pocket piece. And you can see that the velvet side is facing the velvet side of the back part of the coat. So the first step will be now to sew here through so that the loop can't move and then to sew here the line on the pocket and once that has been sewn in place I'm going to uh, compare it with the other side and before I sew the pocket in on the other side I will make sure that um, they are definitely equally high and in the same position on both sides. Here I have the front part of the coat where I have sewn the lining piece for the pocket in and um, here I have the cord that has been uh, sewn in and let's have a look at the other side. It's kind of complicated to find the right side. There it is. So this is the back part of the coat. Here I have sewn on the velvet piece for the pocket. So the next step is I'm going to fold the pocket over. I'm going to pin it in place because it makes it a bit easier. I'm going to do the same on the other side. So let me put the pin in first. I'm going to remove it later. Now I will, I will, what was that? That was a weird sounding word, but it was supposed to be I will. I will align the pocket pieces so I will make sure that they are perfectly covering each other and then I will also align this upper part so I will start okay you can probably see it this was too far I will start pinning um, the front and the back part of the coat together so I will pin this together all the way down and also here um, I will make, make sure that the line where the pocket piece ends is aligned perfectly here. Okay, now I'm happy with that. And I'm going to put a pin here like this. I'm just gonna put roughly a few pins in for now and I'm going to add more later because otherwise we're gonna be sitting here for till Christmas. Anyway, I'm going to continue pinning below the pocket and I'm going to draw a line for you that you know where I will be sewing. So I'm going to go like this. Now here it's important that you continue the stitch that is already here. So I will sew a little bit inwards and then I will sew here. This is perfect with this crayon. I think this is much easier to see because whenever I'm working on something black you can't really see that even though I'm having gazillion lights here. So, and again, this is the line where I, where I have sewn the pocket on, on the piece. Okay, I'm not gonna sew here through, but this is where I need to continue sewing then upwards. 
So, and this is basically the magic of inside pockets. I mean, once you know how to do that, it is actually not that difficult. This is the other side of the coat, so here you can easily see the loop. And here, ta-da, is my inside pocket. And if you wouldn't know that there is a pocket, you wouldn't even see it. Of course, the fabric doesn't look so nice now because it hasn't been ironed yet. And whenever I'm sewing before the piece is finished, it always looks like a piece of crap, in my opinion. And it always looks better when it's done. But yeah, that's the pocket. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you, this is a common practice. It, it's a really good thing to do. So I'm going to turn this over. So, here we have the side seam, here's the pocket, and here's the zipper in the front, and this is the middle seam on the front part. So, it is always good to attach some kind of a string to the pocket, very loosely, to the middle seam, because that way what can't happen is that the pocket would be wandering around inside of your coat. So, I made, um, I used a white uh, thread so that you can see it better. I put on the velvet part, this time without the lining, just to show how the piece turned out so far. So here are the loops that we've sewn in and these are my side pockets. Uh, my entire hand fits in, this is perfect. I don't think I would need bigger pockets here. I mostly only put in my key when I go shortly out of the house and I don't take my purse with me or when I go with my puppy for a walk um, somewhere near from here. And let's see, the iPhone fits perfectly into the breast pocket. The only thing I will have to do is to saw on some kind of press button so that the flap won't open. And this time I call it the correct thing. I don't call it blend anymore. I don't know how I came up with that. It's kind of embarrassing. Anyway, so the phone fits in too. And I think this is good so far. So the next step will be pinning in the sleeves. I think I will have to cut the shoulders about half an inch back because this is definitely too wide. You can see it goes far beyond my shoulders and when I fold it in. Yeah, I think that would be perfect. And now let's have a look how to make the sleeves. So here I have one of the sleeves. I have sewn um, the two upper thirds of the sleeve through with a straight stitch that has been very loose. It is important that the stitch is very loose because now I will use one of the ends here. There is still thread uh, hanging out and I'm going to kind of scrunch this because what I want to achieve is that the, the top part is going to be a bit rounded. So it's not supposed to be really folds. Something between completely flat and folds so I'm going to spread it equally, then I'm going to start scrunching it also from the other side. Sometimes it's really difficult from one side, so we just have to do it from the other side when it doesn't work here. And I think this is good enough. You can always smoothen it if it's too much. And once that has been prepared, I'm going to pin the sleeve uh, to the rest of the coat. So here I have my armhole. This is the front and this is the back. Here is the side seam, so I hope that helps. Um, I went a little bit closer with the camera because um, uh, I think it's easier to see. So now I'm going to align this as well as possible together. I'm just gonna pin it from the outside. I'm going to adjust the pins later the way I need them. And now I will start from the bottom. I will pin it at right angles again. And I will move my way up. And whenever I come to the ruffled part or the scrunched part, um, I smoothen it only a little bit. And uh, what I will have to do is to sew through the exact same line that I have used for scrunching the sleeve. So this is the top part where the fabric has been scrunched. You can see that it lays quite flat. The only thing that is kind of loopy is um, the excess fabric. And as I mentioned, then I have to sew through the exact same line 
that I have used for scrunching the fabric. And what is also important is before you start sewing, turn it over and see if there are no folds because that would look really ugly. And if you don't feel comfortable sewing on sleeves with all the pins in it, one thing I can recommend is to take um, just a needle and hand stitch the sleeve to it um, on the line that has been already sewn through and then take the pins out and then you can sew again through the line. And I have already sewn in the other sleeve and this is how it looks like. So I don't know if you can see it but it is kind of, it kind of goes a little bit rounder over the shoulder area. So this is what I meant with the uh, forming it or I don't know if I said it that way but yeah it just doesn't lay so flat and it looks so much better on your shoulders. So here we go I have um, hand stitched the sleeve to the arm opening with a white thread so that you can see it. So this is definitely a nice option. There are two benefits of this. First as I have already mentioned the fabric would definitely stay in place, you don't have to worry about the pins. And the second benefit is that way you have a nice guide how far from the edge are you supposed to sew. So now I will return to my sewing machine and I will sew the second sleeve in. So this is how our coat looks like so far. Um, the sleeves are in place, we have our pockets, we have our loops for the belt and the lining is finished. Um, one more step I want to do on the front part is I want to uh, hand stitch um, the bottom part of the inside pocket to the front part of the coat because I feel like once I pinned this in place the flaps stay nicer in place. I was actually originally planning on sewing on press buttons here um, so that I could close the flaps but so far it looks like it won't be even necessary because actually they lay nicely flat so I will consider it later or consider it I will decide it later that's what I wanted to say and that was it for today in the next video I will finish the hood I will also add the color and some further details that came with that so make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you won't miss any further parts just hit the button above me or the button down below also, if you like today's tutorial, don't forget to give it a thumb up. You can also follow me on Instagram, link is listed down below, together with part one of the series. And also, I listed there several playlists that might be interesting for you. Thank you so, so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week with part three. And have a wonderful day. Bye!